Welcome to a new episode of My Dear Kitchen in Helsinki podcast. My guest today is Swedish-speaking Finnish chef Christian Tikkanen. Christian is the founder and secretary of Finland Svenska Maltese Academy, aka Finland's Swedish Food Academy in English. Christian and I talked about the food culture of Swedish-speaking population in Finland. We discussed what food culture meant and what factors affected a food culture, and we talked about the importance of food in maintaining the culture of Swedish-speaking population. We also talked about some of the signature dishes and recipes, and if it is in danger of being lost. Christian also introduced Finland Svenska Maltese Academy and actions taken to preserve the food culture of Swedish-speaking Finns. At the end of the episode, Christian has a question for you, and we hope to see your answers as a comment on social media. Hope you enjoy our discussion. Hey, Christian, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks for accepting to do this interview. Uh, we're going to talk today about Swedish-Finnish uh, food culture here in Finland. Um, but first, about you. Can you introduce yourself briefly to our listeners? Yeah, thank you, Ashlan. My name is Christian Tikkanen. I'm 62 years old. I'm a Swedish-speaking Finnish citizen from Finland who works at, as a head chef for the moment here in Norway. And because of my profession, I have traveled around the Nordics and landed here in Norway. Uh, I usually jokingly say that I practice a kind of Nordic cooperation through the food. But in fact, that is exactly what I do in my daily work. And I came to Norway in 2003 and worked then at the Telenor, the Norwegian telecompany with restaurants where we made Nordic food for international guests. And after that, I had a very good opportunity to, in 2010, be the head chef of the Finnish embassy here in Norway and Oslo for six years. And now I work with food education. I educate chefs into food making in kindergartens both here in Norway, Sweden, and also Finland. And we educate chefs how to make Nordic food for children in the age of, what is it, three to seven years. And how important the food in that age is not only for the reason that it is healthy, healthy and nutritious, but also because it has an historical, historical and identical reason. And it helps children from the beginning to understand their own food culture. So that's a little bit about me. Great. Um, uh, so I want to first start a little bit because our most of our listeners are not going to be from Finland or maybe even Sweden. So um, they don't know probably so much about the ties between Sweden and Finland. We did talk about the historical and cultural ties a bit in our in my uh, you know previous episodes, but uh, maybe with you we can talk a little bit about the Swedish Finns today like where which regions they mostly live in Finland uh, their percentage in the populations and so a bit a bit of question uh, information so that our listeners yeah. can be more acquainted with yeah yeah in the aspect of that that you talk about the swedish and finnish citizens uh, i myself is uh, uh, i'm also a finnish citizen with swedish as my native language and as I think probably some knows that Finland has two national languages, Swedish and Finnish. And most of the Swedish speaking Finns lives along the coastline of Finland, the coastline that first to, to Sweden. But Finland has historically belonged to Sweden for over 700 years. So it has for sure also had a great significance for the Finnish Swedish identity through the history. And many times the food culture is a broad concept that focuses on the cultural side of the production, distribution and consumption of the food and drinks. And factors that affect the food culture includes, what should I say, access to raw materials, cooking techniques and traditions, as well as religious food rules, but also ideas about what is healthy, trendy and otherwise desi desirable and vice versa. And our eating habits diff differently depending on where in the country you live and what language you use. And I would say that what is common in the Finnish speaking part of Finland can be completely different from the eating habits you have in the Swedish part 
talking of the country, even if we are influenced by each other over the time. So that's one side of the, the thing that that could be managed mentioned. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask about the like food culture, because I think many people when we say food culture, they may just think about recipes, or, you know, just just yeah, food itself, yeah. but it's, of course, it's affected by so many other things. I mean, it's it has a very broad meaning when you say food culture. Yeah, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I want to ask this now, this thing, approach this in a different way then. Uh, what is the importance of food in maintaining the Swedish-Finnish culture? Yeah, I would say that as we all know, food and culture has always gone hand in hand. And many times it's like you could compare them with a brother and a sister. They are related to each other and cannot escape the fact that it's also these who two characteristics that create our own identity. So for me, yes, food has an enormous significance for the maintenance of one's own identity. And even though food culture is an in, is in a constant transformation, it is nevertheless affected by the history of which one is a part of. Mm -hmm, true. Um, now, what can you say about the char characteristics of Swedish Finns food culture? I mean, can we make one whole generalization or are there differences according to different regions or communities? Yeah, I would say that Let's say it this way, that there are many that, who believe that there are no special dishes that are characteristic for the Finnish Swedish food culture. And they say that the Finnish Swedish food culture is instead a combination of traditions and habits. But that, that's not entirely the truth. Because I think that the Swedish Finnish food culture, like so many other food cultures, also has its own characteristics. The Finnish Swedish food culture has been shaped by its own landscape dishes, parish dishes that have their local connection and history and food that has shaped our Finnish Swedish identity through the history is very, very strong, as we already said. But I would say that even though the Finnish Swedish food culture is deeply rooted in the Finnish soil and in a constant transformation, I would mention that the Finnish Swedish food culture is characterized first and foremost by the common history we have had and have with our Western neighbor Sweden. And oh yes, there are region, regional differences. What you eat near the coast and the sea is different from what you eat further away from the coastline. But for to give you one example, the, the, there are many, many different uh, meals that we eat in the Swedish part that you can't compare with the Finnish part of Finland. For example, in, in the Finnish part of Finland, you eat mostly Karelian stews, Karelian pastries, and all those that you even have seen in the stores in Finland. But in the Swedish part of Finland, where we talk to Swedish language, there are many soups, there are many different uh, breads, cauliflower, carrot, potato, sugar peas, and milk and boil it together to a kind of summer soup, if you ever have heard about that. That's a very traditional Swedish part talking meal in, the, in, in Finland. So yes, there are very, I would say, huge differences, but often they are not mentioned so much for the Swedish part, more than the Finnish part. Mm. Yeah, I was going to also ask uh, in my next next question, uh, maybe uh, two or three specific dishes um, more in detail um, that symbolize, you know, Swedish Finnish food culture the best. Yeah, one of the best is, as I already told you, that the summer soup, snow soup, called in Swedish. And in I've, Finnish, had, I've had that soup uh, a few times, and I didn't know, for example, that it was. Okay. Uh, mostly from uh, originated from uh, that part yeah 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 the, this snow soup or, or in the english called summer soup in in sweden they have had it for centuries over 300 years and there it's called engamat so that's one thing that we have heritage from sweden over to finland for a long time ago 
and in Finland we call it snolsoppa. I don't know why it's called snolsoppa, but but it's a truly vegetable soup. Cauliflower, carrot, potato, sugar peas, and milk boiled together and served with a good country red rubric that is a very Finnish Swedish food culture <laughs> meal to eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take one thing. Uh, and another like, thing, if yeah. I can mention also, is is uh, a kind of what should I say? Macaroni stew or something like that. You make uh, it's macaroni loda in Swedish. You boil macarons until they are tender and then you mix that together with fried minked meat and put it in the oven with a little bit cheese over the top and then you take it out and eat it and that's very common all over the country now yeah yeah i i, have, I don't eat meat so i don't i, don't, uh, I, ne- I didn't eat that but um, I, i've heard a lot about that one uh, too. and of course and, and of course all the kind of fish that's a truly finnish swedish meal concept all the fish that we have yeah uh that that um summer soup uh, i learned for the first time how to do it actually uh from a friend uh, many years ago in my in one of the bigger apartments that i lived in we had a um finnish learning through cooking i was organizing this kind of little workshops at home for uh friends like me who are foreigners trying to learn finnish and you know our finnish friends were coming to to teach us in just speaking Finnish. <laughs> so that was one of the uh, dishes that I learned. Uh, and that was the first time that I had that uh, dish. Oh, how nice. <laughs> yeah. In the end, I didn't really learn Finnish that much, but, <laughs> yeah. but we ate good food. <laughs> Exciting. Did you like it? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, I love I love soup. And I love all, all kinds of, you know, everything that is a mixture of uh, vegetables, I mean, so I, I really loved that. And then, of course, I did it many times myself. And uh, yeah. it was really nice. Yeah. So, uh, as you said, of course, uh, I mean, as we know about the um, historical and cultural all kinds of ties with Sweden, and you mentioned a little bit about, you know, of course, uh, food culture, some kind of uh, connection with Sweden. Uh, what would you say exactly the similarities or maybe differences, if you like? between Swedish Finnish and Swedish Swedish <laughs> food cultures yeah one good similarity from Swedish Finnish to the Swedish Swedish food culture is that in Finland we all almost every time we make food we make our foods in a kind of not a pot or a box or something that you put in the oven Seldom we use the frying pan or something like that. Morely, morely we use everything in the oven. So that's a very, 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 very Finnish thing to do the food, even if it's then from the Swedish talking part or the Finnish talking part of Finland. That's one. Yeah, that's true. There are a lot of things that like this kind yeah. of in Finnish laticos or. In Swedish. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you said it loud in the Finnish there, Lord yeah. or in Swedish. Lord, yeah, I'm mm. still, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. As you already heard about the macaroni Lord, it's a Lord through, and and then if you take uh, many other things, Jansson's Frest tells it's a, like a Lord also. Many things go by the oven before it comes up on the food mm-hmm. table. Yeah, especially there are a lot of these uh, oven dishes specifically for uh christmas time the christmas yeah, table that's true. That's mm-hmm. true. yeah uh, and and we did talk about well you you did mention um a bit of the differences between swedish finnish and finnish finnish uh, parts but also if you want to say a bit more about similarities or differences between swedish finnish and finnish finnish and also how did these two affect each other over time and in history yeah As I already earlier mentioned, we in Finland have been contacted with Sweden over the history in 700 years, but we also have and should mention that in some time we also has belonged to Russia for over 100 years in our time in the history. And the Swedish part and the Russian part has been a, what should I say, good mix together from the both parts. And 
I couldn't say that it has been connected through some, what should I say, hard work together. It's, it has melted together finely in some way over the history. But the similarities are not so, so common from the uh, Russian part to the Swedish part. <laughs> so, so I would say that the S Swedish part of our food culture is always in some point put it to side more than the Russian part of our food culture. And that affects us mostly in the daily life because in all those big meal sharing times that they have for, for example, in our, what should I say, uh, our national dog, what is that in English now? I can't come on that. <laughs> national. Uh, our national day, yeah. Then always, mostly in whole of the Finland, they are talking about uh, Karelian pastries and all those blini things, but seldomly they mention the Swedish part of our food culture. And that's a bit, little bit sad that they don't mention that so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I ate when I came to Finland in, you know, 12 years ago now uh, was Karelian pie. And, and that's the first thing you see if you, for example, go to Wikipedia and you're just curious about, you know, Finnish cuisine. What am I going to eat when I go there? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what you see. And I, and I like it a lot. But uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. Uh, I never yeah. thought about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good dish. I don't say that. But when you are talking about the Finnish food culture, we should all always remember that we have two sides of our food culture, one Swedish and one Russian, but also always mostly the Russian part is mentioned, not the Swedish part. And that's a little bit sad. Yeah. Um, now, I want to come to this Finland Svenska Maltese Academy. Um, uh, tell us about that. First of all, when was it founded and where is it? Yeah. Nice you mentioned it, but because that's my... <laughs> yes, and that's, that's how I found my... you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Finland's Veska Maltes Academy, the Finnish-Swedish uh, Food Academy, was established 2020. Before that, in 2019, 2018, we were discussing home at Finland. And I have to mention to you that the... The address for the Finland's Svenska Maltes Academy is in Helsinki. That is our place where we, we have the, 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 the seating. But mostly we have now had everything on time because the two years from 2020 until this day was everything <laughs> affected by the corona. <laughs> Anyhow, it was built in, in 2020, 28th of March. Then we established our settings and all the parts that was for making of the academy. And we are, as I said to you, we are in Helsinki, that's our home place, but we are all over the Finland <laughs> for the moment. And our, our common goal for this academy is, as I just told you also, to, to lift up the Finish with this food culture to all to a better standing, so that we know that even the Finnish Swedish talking people in Finland and outside Finland can be a part and aware of their cultural rights. So that's the the main goal for us to to lift the Swedish Finnish Swedish food culture up to a better standing. That's our main goal. And uh, I think you are, I don't know how much you, you were able to, of course, uh, in this past two years, but you're organizing some activities and events. Uh, what kind of, uh, how, how do you, what what you do uh, practically to, to do this? To... Practically, it was men, meant to be that we had to start in 2020 with an, um, big, big, big feast for our first meeting, but then it get, it did what it did with the corona, so we couldn't have anything. 
So, but but normally now when we are coming into a, a, a other time when the corona is past, the normality for us is to make events like uh, courses, uh, uh, other food activities, uh, events, whatever that could could uh, give the people in Finland some some knowledge about us so everything is up for for whatever we can do from this moment and forward and which language are you going to use swedish uh, swedish yeah mm-hmm. swedish. maybe i can join <laughs> i'm <laughs> yeah, trying to find course, everything should, swedish should, now that i'm learning <laughs> um, and also as the swedish meal academy we want to highlight the meal makers growers and and fruit, food producers, dishes and meals that have shaped the Finnish Swedish identity through the history and, and all those things. But and mostly the the our for the moment biggest goal is to talk to children in Finland from small age to to the higher up going schools so that they can be aware of the Swedish food culture yeah i was i was also uh just as you mentioned uh, i was also going to ask you about um last year in july i made a um trip from helsinki to turku uh, by car and then uh, on the way i i've noticed and of course also now when i'm doing this podcast i'm constantly looking for producers like farms or other producers and i've seen that there's a lot of swedish speaking uh food producers or farms as, at least on that ro- route for example mm-hmm. um so like what kind of uh relationship do you have or are you planning to have with those producers like farmers and, and other um, swedish speaking f- any food producers um, yeah yeah we started already if i don't recall it wrong but we started last year 2021 with putting on our home site we have up in uh, in the region of Österbotten uh, in the middle of finland at the west coast we have uh, a region there it's called uh, food makers in the region of Österbotten where you can you can find on a map all the vegetable growers, all the fish uh, maker, bread makers, fisher, fishers, all, all those things. And if I not remember wrong, we should have 73 or almost 80 different producers in that map. That, that's one of the goals also to, to put, on, put on the home side for us. But we are still working with, with so much to put on so <laughs> we don't but you have still uh, i mean i i went thoroughly through your website and i'm happy to say that i understood it uh, <laughs> um, um, and uh, there is quite lo- there are quite a lot of things to to read there's a lot of information already uh, which mm, yeah, you know, that yeah, people can yeah. uh, there is a there is an english uh, small english a brief english summary but of course i mean if you don't speak swedish you can just google translate i don't know because there is a lot of information that is good to to see but also when i looked at the website i saw that you can be a member yeah that's so how be. can how can one be a member the best thing to be a member is to go to our website and then go and read on the Bli medlem uh, opportunity place and there you can just click on it and then you can become a member after you have answered some questions and to be member the member membership uh, cost you 18 euros if i don't recall it from yeah and then we are also talking about uh, now it's just personal members but we have been in the board talking also about to get some uh, what should i say uh, producer members so that they could so that they could be one part of the memberships too and and maybe be some sponsors in the future but that's something that we just still talking about in the board and i'm going to and for the listeners i'm going to put the link to the um 
Finland Svenska Maltese Academy to yeah, in the in the description part of the YouTube. Um, so they can just go in and check uh, the details. Uh, but again, so, something that I saw on your website, there is this um, event called Multi Dance Yemen's Cups Dog, which is yeah. Meal Community Day, which is celebrated on 23rd of May, quite soon. Yeah, so, on Monday. Yeah. So what is this event? And also while you're talking about this event, since it's related, can you maybe talk about uh, in your opinion, how uh, does food create communities and how important is it to eat together with other people such as friends, family, loved, loved ones and so on? As I told you, I'm working in Norway and the background to the day how it came about was that in 2018, 20th, 23rd May, we were some Nordic chefs, clinical nutritions and physiologists and healthcare staff gathering in Oslo to try to find a solution to a both national and international problem, namely eating alone, alone eating. There are so many of them. And we, we mentioned that the need to give lonely people a focal point in everyday life was considered in a great need. And therefore the issue of so-called meal friends for lonely and elderly people was raised and, uh, and as an, an alternative, a meal friend came by anyone who stands up for the one who is alone. A friend who comes to visit to maintain a social community and to break the loneliness during the meal. It was very, very, very exciting to be part of. So the multi and Siemens Cups dog, the meal sharing day was instituted by me in 2020 when we gathered to make the Finland Svenska Maltese Academy and then it has from these two years forward been celebrated and will be celebrated internationally every day on 23rd of May and in the prescription for the day if you also go in the, our own home site to, to read it I can mention a little part of it that, that it stands for that a meal has several dimensions and addition to the nutritional function of the food, it also fulfills a physical and social need. And it can be about reward, love or upbringing. The food can also confirm the relationships people have with each other. The meal can look different depending on the, for example, gender, class or culture, all, all those things. And food and meals with other people are important in activities to feel quality of life, self-esteem and joy. So far more than far, food is only needed to survive and satisfy the feeling of hunger. And for example, when we, for example, gather around here in herring, fish and new potatoes in Finland, also even for that matter, until midsummer, it is more than food that attracts. A meal is a meeting, a way of transferring values. So the common meal simply benefits democracy, if you will say it in that way. And fellowship, fellowship is often the, goal, often the goal of the meal and the appetite comes in the community around the table. But there is an excessive proportion of alone eaters. Although many try to solve the problem by finding new relationships, relationships and social networks. So the lonely, loneliness is difficult to manage and becomes very noticeable in connection with these. So therefore we started to, to make this as a day that we can all remember to eat more together, consider the facts that when you sit down in the home with your children, your grandmas, your grandpas and all those, make it a joyful time, not just a stressful time that you, I have to eat because I have to go to dit and that and all, or, or all other things. The meal is a sharing point that should be very important in everyday life. Exactly. Um, I can identify with that really easily because I come from Turkey and that's what we always do. Like uh, We always like a me, you know a meal time is always you know a family coming together like we don't ever eat like i'm going to eat myself dinner first because i'm hungry or something we always have to sit down 
and you know spend that time also of course in the weekends um especially coming from a very big family i mm. have you know we used to have lots of cousins and everyone yeah. coming in our in our apartments and eating and here of course uh, we try to do the same with um uh, different groups of friends uh, as well, like and not just you know, uh, well, uh, other you know foreign friends or just Turkish friends, but we have friends from also you know the Finnish friends as well. We're trying to gather together and you know to share a, a kind of this potluck dinners okay. where everybody brings something, and and yeah. the idea is not just of course to eat, but but to actually get together. Which, of course, again, uh, got disrupted a little bit because of the corona situation. Mm, but we yeah. then at least try to do it uh, outside uh, when we could um, in the summertime, in the five summer days we had. <laughs> so, uh, but um, now I'm going to move on to my final question, uh, which is, um, well... So with only about 5% of Finland's population today currently identified officially as Swedish fin Finnish population, uh, do you think this food culture and also Swedish Finnish culture in general is in danger today? Are there any traits of losing it? And your, you, you took a step uh, already, for, for example, by creating this academy to preserve the culture and to teach people about this culture. But do you know any other actions uh, taken to preserve this culture? Yes, as you already said, 5%. According to the latest statistics, there are 290,000 Finns in Finland who share, have Swedish as their native national language. And I would say that, according to that, that we are only 290,000 of 5 million people in Finland. <laughs> So it's very clear that when the Swedish-speaking Finnish population is so small in number and is counted as an ethnic group in the minority, there is also a danger that both the language and the food culture may disappear in, if no one takes care of and protects its rights to exist. So that's one, one uh, part of the Finnish-Swedish Academy that we put it together. But there is also, I should mention here now that in Finland, we also have uh, an, another organization that is quite big today, uh, Marta Förbundet, Finland Svenska Marta Förbund. They are quite, 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 quite big in, in the speaking of Finnish, Swedish talking people in Finland and their cultural rights also, even bigger than we are for the moment. <laughs> they have been. They have been preserving the rights for, what is it? Not 100 yet, but almost 60, 70. No, almost 100. They had 90 years uh, for some years ago. So they coming near 100 years soon. Yeah. Are they are these the part of there's this I know that there is this I'm going to say in Finnish probably the name but Martat organization so it's like the Swedish yeah it's the same it's the same yeah okay they yeah. have a Finnish part of it also but it started with the Swedish talking people in Finland that they started the Marta Föreningen Finland Svenska Marta Förbund mm -hmm. and of course I mean when you think about it today Finland is becoming more and more diverse of course uh, in itself yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. people coming like just like me for example I mean people coming from all around the world and everybody of course uh, everybody's bringing their own food culture with them not necessarily being a food making person but you know we all bring our food uh, cultures food habits and everything so of course the culture is always changing and shaping. So it's 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 of course well, with such a small population uh, within the whole population, of course, how do you preserve it as it's also changing with these other um, uh, effects coming from? Yeah, yeah, and that's also a good thing that that it's changing over the time, if, because at least what I know about food culture, it has to be in the changing all the time. But but one of the things that, that Finland has been affected of the latest centuries is that we are more, 
in Finland, we are more affected of that everything should be effective and in and more or less industrialized. We are not so, as you said, and when you mentioned that about the the gathering to two meals in the families and all all the part of of the, the heritage that in the southern part of Europe all all are gathering together and making the food and uh, the, the food eating together a, a big party but here in Finland we have almost forgot that so we are more affected of that everything should be effective and fast food and all the other things are popping in in our daily life more and more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well um i hope uh, there's going to be more eating together i know that people are are uh, becoming more i mean at least enjoying uh i mean that's what i understand from um talking with my finnish friends that it is relatively new thing to go out for not just for drinks but to eat and there are a lot of new restaurants in in Helsinki at least like very exciting things happening in Helsinki for a while uh, regarding food and people are going all together to eat now not just to drink not just going to this because this idea of this um Olut Ravintola, which was like beer restaurant. What is this? So for me, it was very interesting. And and now there are more actual restaurants around, and people are actually going in big numbers, like big uh, groups, uh, enjoying their meals. And of course, um, activities like Vappu, like this um, uh -huh. May, first of May or or Midsummer. This is always uh, something to do together, grilling, and you know maybe being under the rain most of the time yeah. but... and, I, and i think as you mentioned uh, i think these two last years with the corona has shaped many of our habits in another way and just that thing that also in finland there has popped up many more new restaurants i think that's an effect of that the two years when we have been not able to do almost anything just sit at home or have team meetings now it's time for everybody to in big numbers go out and take the whole family and whatever to go out or eat or drink or whatever you want to do but you want to do it together exactly because I you mean, have been sitting in two years alone almost like in a prison <laughs> yeah yeah once it was taken from us i think we yeah, realized more true. oh my god i mean i was at at some point almost going to talk to my you know uh, walls or something just. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah okay but uh, these were this was very nice and these are all my questions uh, do you have any uh, final comments uh, that you want to say or also can you maybe ask one question to our listeners uh, to make them think further after listening to this episode yeah well i could mention and say that i wish that more time was spent eating together in the families that the common meal would be a sacred moment more than just a stressful moment and a moment not to be missed because it is such an incredibly important social gathering that promotes both health and well-being and great peace and harmony and and to make a question in in the speaking here so nowadays everyone is so busy that the life's necessary breaks often give have to give way to other priorities and so one question you might want to ask yourself is how important do you think the common meal is to the family is it so valuable that you willingly set aside more time for it very good question and it's something that i also ask sometimes <laughs> people around me and to talk, that i talk like um yeah uh, because um i sometimes see that food is just in in some also some events uh, and stuff because I um, help organize events and I also pro you know make food sometimes for these events and I sometimes think that food is always an afterthought like uh, oh it's just something that we should have for people but it's it's not just important the events or whatever it is 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 the, the thing and I always feel sad about this because food is always important I mean it's not just a functional thing I must eat because you know I'm a human we all need to eat to function and that's it and I always try to 
uh, make people think uh, food is much more than that. And that's also maybe probably the, the first reason why I wanted to do this podcast as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, thanks again for this interview. It was really nice. And um, again, uh, I'm going to put the, uh, the Multidance Academy um, website on YouTube. And um, I wish you good luck with the continuation of this. I mean, I hope you can make more events <laughs> now that <laughs> unless we have like a hundred uh, wave of Corona coming or something, uh, I hope we can do more events and uh, maybe we can meet one day in person in one of those events. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks again and bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want to know more about the blog behind this podcast, check out www.mydearkitchenhelsinki.com and find it also on Instagram and Facebook. Have a healthy week.